my channel. My name is Nifon Sui. On this channel, I make some tutorials. I post new videos on Monday, Wednesdays, and on Saturdays. So if you're into stuff like this, make sure to check back on those days in order to watch new content. Alright? If you are a beginner or if you're a person that's trying to brush up on your skills and offer online courses, I'll be showing a demo on how to make a jumpsuit so you can watch and decide if it would be convenient for you to learn online. If you're interested, send me a message on Telegram. Alright? Number is on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you like the video, please give it a like. Do not forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Alright, welcome to today's video. In this video, I will show you how to make a batwing kimono with the metallic teal fabric that we have on the table. So, to begin, the first thing you will do is you need to measure from one side of the body across to the other side of the body, wherever you want it to be. So, after I took my measurements, I had 50 inches. Okay, so you divide that number by 2. So, 50 inches divided by 2 is 25 inches. Alright, so my fold would be 25 inches wide. Alright, so you can see me folding it now. Alright measure it out make sure it's 25 so um after this has been done we are going to how we sew this is first of all we would cut the back and then use that to cut the front so the first part you can see me doing here is the back so the next thing is the length of the kimono you need to consider how long you want it to be for me i want to use the entire length of the um, fabric 60 inches but you can reduce it if you have any reason to do so all right the next thing we will do is you need to measure from the shoulder to wherever your knee is going to be uh, because this is a batwing kimono is supposed to be straight and um, full from the top and then tapering a bit at the bottom part so for me the shoulder to the knee is around 40 inches so i'm measuring from the shoulder okay half inch make sure to keep half inch at the top like this can see me doing now so after i do that i've gotten to 40 i'm going to place that down now what you would do is you are going to divide your hip measurements now your hip yes your hip you divide your hip measurements by four and add five inches to it so the hip measurements I'm working with is 40 inches, 40 inches divided by 4 is 10 uh, plus 5 inches, 15. So you can see me marking that now and I'll mark the same thing at the hem and simply draw a straight line. Now what I'm going to quickly do is just rule a line at the top of the fabric half inch away from the top. Alright, this is where our shoulder, neckline and, neck, and all the measurements of top will fall. After that has been done, we are going to measure um, a space you, you will need to keep a space for um, your arm to be able to pass in and out comfortably so for that I'm placing six inches at the edge of the fabric as you can see me doing now okay make sure that whatever you're keeping is wide enough for your arm to pass through all right and then you're going to keep um, one inch away from the edge all right so you see that one inch away from the edge make a mark there and then you're going to make a curve from up there to that point over there. Now, make sure not to make it a very sharp line because that's going to ruin the batwing effect we want. You want to taper. You see, you see the way I'm curving. I'll go straight down there and make a curve over there. So you see, it's not a sharp curve. So it, it, it's not just a straight line, sorry. So make sure to take note of that. Take note of that. So um, after you've rolled your line, you can simply chop it off straight from the bottom look at what i'm doing up here all right so the next thing i'm going to do is to cut the front now when you're cutting the front you are going to subtract whatever neckline you want from the 25 inch that we have at the top so to break it down we have 25 at the top i want a neckline width of six six divided by two three and i'm going to take that from the 25. all right i hope that that is clear <coughs> So, 25 minus 3 inches, because 3 inches is half of 6, so we're going to be left with 22. So, from the front, I will cut two straight pieces that are 22 inches wide for both sides of the front. I hope that that is clear. You would see me do it, so it's going to be clear by the time you see me do it. But we have a neckline 
width that was um, a, the top of our fold was 25, we're subtracting 3 inches from that 22. 22 is what I used to cut the width of the two fabrics we've just seen replaced on the table. I will now place my back on top of that and I'm going to use the back to trim all right, the edge of the front so that they'll be the same on the side. Okay, so the front will be shorter, but at the side, the front and back will be the same. I hope that that is clear. So you can see me cutting it now, all right, all the way out. You see that? All right, so now we are on the sewing machine. So this is the back that we have on the sewing machine. This is the back, the back that is on the table. You can see it's a full piece. So you're going to pick up a side of the front that's supposed to correspond with whatever side of the back that you're on right now. And simply place it front facing front like I am placing and then you're going to stitch across it all right so you can see me here I'm joining the front to the back together at the shoulder so I'm going to stitch until I get to the end and I will stop you're going to turn over to the other side of the front now you want because of you you might make a mistake if you want to simply place six across and for you continue placing the front it will be best to turn the front you can see the other side of the front i'm placing it on the machine now i will place the back on top of it and i will stitch by doing this we will make sure that whatever space we truly have is the only space that would remain in the center i hope that this is clear all right just so that everything lines perfectly it's best to when you stitch the other side to where it stops you stop turn about to this side and stitch this other side so you can see the end result you can see because it's stitched from the sides into the center we have a true um, uh, measurement for whatever we're supposed to have in the center. All right. So now I'm simply going to stitch the sides together. Um, the where we have the bat wing effect. I'm going to stitch from here all the way to the bottom part of the kimono. That's what I'm doing now. I've gotten to the straight parts. So I'll just go all the way down, and I'll repeat the same thing on the other side as well. All right. You can see me going around all the way down okay all right now this will be the best time to use an overlocker to finish all the rough edges that you have on the inside in case you are making this for sale or um for a client so if you just want the best now around where you have the curve that little one inch curve there make sure to notch it before you use your overlocker um, to turn it so that that part will turn inside out smoothly on the on the correct side all right i hope you understand what i'm saying all right for the next step is i'm going to show you how to fix the clean edge on the edge of the sleeve so that you can see that's the neck i just showed you and this is the sleeve i've done this part i will show you what i just did on the other side so the first thing we're going to do turn it inside out all right and then you are going to measure the distance see what i'm doing measure from the top after the shoulder joining we're going to measure it so for me i have six inches here what you would do is you would multiply six inches by two because there are two sides of the fabric so six inches um, uh, multiplied by two is 12 inches all right i hope that that is clear because there are two sides so now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead to cut a, cut a piece that is 12 inches wide, um, 12 inches long and 6 inches wide. So this is 12 inches, this is 6 inches. Alright, I'll fold it on the 12 and I'm going to simply stitch. Alright. The next thing you are going to do is lay it flat and spread and iron it. So remember, 12 by 6 and 2 the two both sides and fold the 12 inches on itself and stitch after you have ironed this you collapse it the way i'm collapsing it and then we are now going to attach it to the body of um whatever of our kimono sorry so you see i'm going to place joining on joining you see where i'm planting it make sure that your kimono is on the wrong side and now i would simply stitch all the way around holding the three of them in place so there'll be two sides that's, that that um, would be part of the of the um, band we just created and then we have the body so you can see that's how we have achieved this the last thing we have to do 
is we need to finish the edges we can't just fold it and hem it that's going to be crude what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the edge you see the edge we're going to come from one side of the hem over here and we'll measure from here all the way through the body all right so you can see what i'm doing all the way across across the neck into the other side all the way down to the the hem to the hem sorry when you get that number you will cut that number with a width of six inches so let's say after you measure all around you end up with 70 you will cut 70 inches with a width of six inches all right after i measured mine i ended up with 130 so the fabric i have is not long enough to give me 130 so i cut 65 inches in two places that i intend to join together in order to give me 130 but i added half inch to the 65 for my sewing allowance so i ended up cutting 65.5 two pieces of 65.5 by the time i'm done sewing i will end up with 130 which is what i originally um, had when i measured my kimono so i'm going to iron that flat so that it is neat and then i will fold it like this and i'll iron it as well so you see first of all iron the seam then fold it in half and iron it all right so after that has been done you're going to turn your kimono to the front side make sure you do it front facing front you're going to start from the bottom you can see there's a down part that's my joining over there i'm now going to stitch them together okay so that's my 130 by 6 inches it has been folded i'm going to consume only half an inch while i am stitching around All right Oh god, why is there always cutting? I'm getting quite close to the end. We're almost done. This would be a good time to use your overlocker to finish the inside all the way around. So I'm going to give this a very good press and then we've come to the end. I'm going to simply hem it up. You can see me doing now. If you've watched this far into the video, thank you for watching. Um please like the video if you like it, subscribe for more because I drop videos like this a couple times a week. I will see you in my next video. Have a lovely day.